Hey, Remley. What do you want, Curly? Before we go on the air, I want to talk to you. Look, I've been thinking. Every radio show er opens with a commercial. Now, why don't we? I don't know. Unless it's because we haven't got a sponsor. We have got a sponsor. They just don't want us to mention their name. But tonight, I'm going to sneak in a commercial. After all, I'm proud of being associated with RCA. They make wonderful products. That they do. Everybody knows you can't make a bad cup of RCA coffee. <laughs> Remley, they don't make coffee. <laughs> RCA Victor makes the best television sets and 45 record players that money can... Wait a minute. Let's start the show, and you can listen to the commercial I wrote for Bill Foreman. It's a honey. RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. <laughs> For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> this is uh, Phil again. Now here's a word from RCA Victor. Fill your life with a new magic world of fun. Enjoy yourself. Have a Highland fling. Yes, that's just what it is when you and your family start enjoying RCA Victor's new 17-inch television console, the Highland. It's fun, it's fine, and it'll be the favorite of your family. That's right. The most famous name in home entertainment, RCA Victor, now brings you the best in 17-inch television with the new Highland console. There's a lot we can say about the Highland, but you just have to see it with its remarkable pictures, clear, bright, and steady, its distinctive console cabinet, beautifully styled, beautifully finished, and priced to fit your family budget. Then you'll know why this is million-proof television. Now, over two million American families have tried, tested, and purchased RCA Victor television. Let your family in for a Highland fling with RCA Victor's exciting new Highland television console. See it at your RCA Victor dealers tomorrow. It's Easter, and Alice, Phil, William, and the children have just returned from church. Oh, I certainly was proud of you two this morning. You look positively adorable. Why, everybody said you were the sweetest and prettiest things in the Easter parade. Thank, Thank you, you, dear. dear. <laughs> I was talking to the girls. Oh, you children look beautiful. Thank you, Mommy. You look beautiful, too. You look so pretty in your new Easter outfit. And so young, too. The lady sitting next to me in church asked me if you were my sister. She did? Well, that was very sweet of her. Uh, how did she happen to talk to you, dear? She lost her glasses, and I was helping her look for them. <laughs> you should have quit when I was ahead. You did look young, sis, didn't she, Philip? She certainly did. One would never guess that on her next birthday, this kid is going to be... Never mind. <laughs> Oh, I must have looked young. Why, even the minister commented on it. When I walked into church on your arm, he said, Happy Easter, my child. And I'm glad you brought your father this time. <laughs> he said that about me, huh? Yep. Well, just for that, when I solo with the choir, I'll sing off key from now on. <laughs> from now on, he says. You haven't hit a... <laughs> hit a true note since... Please, Willie, please. Alice, I may not look as young as I used to, but I noticed a lot of admiring glances cast in my direction during the parade today. And small wonder, I was impeccable in my striped trousers, cutaway coat, and flowered boot in the <laughs> I must admit you look nice, Phil, but nobody notices a man in the Easter parade. It's the women who attract attention. Some of those outfits today were dazzling. Did you notice Mrs. Cook in her flowered Hawaiian print? How could I help noticing her? She wore a flowered dress, flowers in her hair, flowers on her hat, and a floral corsage. 
She looked like the opening of a new restaurant. I thought she looked lovely. And, Mommy, did you see Mrs. Martin? She had on a beautiful green organdy dress. Yes, and I loved her Mylon straw cartwheel hat. And did you see Mrs. Roberts? She had on a beige shantung dress with that lovely mink stole. And did any of you girls notice Mrs. Councilman? <laughs> no, I didn't, Phil. What was she wearing? She looked ravishing in a Hanmacher street-length suit of ice blue satin and tulle with a flared peplum. And her hat was a pearl-studded cloche of matching satin and file adorned with sheer illusion veiling. <laughs> The blue was repeated in the shower of delphinium blossoms pinned to her lapel. <laughs> her ensemble was set off by accessories of a canvas water bucket, wrapped leggings, <laughs> and a leopard skin garter belt. <laughs> worn on the outside. Oh, she must have looked silly. Imagine wearing a flared peplum with illusion veiling. The rap leggings you liked, huh? <laughs> I thought my girlfriend looked lovely. What girlfriend? Why, the girl I came to church with. She was sitting between me and Mrs. Johnson. I you like that? I thought that was Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Stop making fun of Willie's girlfriend. I think you ought to apologize All to him. All right, I'll apologize to him. Hey, Willie, I think your girlfriend, Rutabaga, looked very pretty. <laughs> Her name is Violet. Well, I knew it was something that came out of the ground. <laughs> Look, Willie, I can't understand... Uh-oh, I'll get that. Happy Easter, Curly. Oh, hi, you, Frankie. Happy Easter to you. What do you got there? Some presents for the family. I got some chocolate bunnies for the kids, a plant for Alice, and here's something for you, Curly. I got you three pairs of shorts. Well, that's very nice of you, but what made you buy me shorts? You said you wanted them. When did I say that? When we were driving downtown in your car the other day, you said you needed some new seat covers. <laughs> I wonder what would have happened if I told him my vowels needed grind. <laughs> Do they? I know a cheap Wait doctor. a minute, Ram. <laughs> hey, but no kidding, Ram. Yeah. I appreciate you bringing those nice Happy presents. Happy Easter, Frankie. Hello, Alice. Happy Easter. Say, you're looking mighty cute in your new spring outfit. Well, thank you. Uh, nobody's commenting on the way I look. This is my new Easter outfit. How do you like my yellow shoes? Oh, is that what they are? I thought you were standing in two egg yolks. <laughs> you do look very nice, Frankie, but where did you get the money to buy a new outfit? I got $100 from some guy yesterday. Oh? Did he put up much of a fight when you rolled him? <laughs> Don't be vulgar. I got it legitimately. Okay. What are you doing with the hundred, Rem? Well, I bought a whole new outfit. Underwear, shirt, suit, hat, shoes, socks, and spats. As a result, I don't have too much left of the hundred. How much you have left? Eighty-five dollars. <laughs> Where do you buy your clothes, kid? At Sack Skid Row? <laughs> hey, what are you gonna do with the rest of the money, Frankie? I'm gonna take Alice out for dinner. I wanna repay her for all the kindness she's shown me over the years. She took me in when I was broke. She clothed me. She fed me. She gave me money when I needed it. I know how you feel, Frankie. You should. I did the same thing for you. All right. <laughs> Are you taking me to dinner too, Frank? If you want to, you can tag along. Thanks, Remley. You should do worthwhile things like this. You should do them more often. What do you mean? I don't want to sound Ooh. like I'm preaching a sermon, but I've heard people say... The early bird catches the worm And there's a lot of good logic in that old cliche There's certain obligations you just can't shirk You've got to put that heat on to make that kettle perk And if you want it to be a good day You've got to do a good day's work 
You got to dig, 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 dig for your dinner. Nothing's what you get for free. You got to dig, 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 dig for your dinner. There never was a money tree. And furthermore, my friends, I must repeat, nobody's walking down that easy street. And if you want to live where baby grow, you're going to get an awful lot of noceries. You got to dig, 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 dig for a dollar. It ain't as simple as you think. You can't purloin a sirloin or the butcher will put you in the clink. You just can't be a lazy bird. You got to get off of your twig so you can afford your room and your board and it's nice to have the price of a cig. You got to pay that fiddler man if you want to do a jig. You got to be as happy as a bee to be a Mr. B.I.G. And if you want some dig, dig, dignity, you got to dig, 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 dig for your dinner. Dig, 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 dig. You just can't be that lazy bird. You got to get off of your twig so you can afford your room and your board. And it's nice to have the price of a cig. You got to. Hey, old fiddler man, if you want to do that jig, you got to be as busy as a bee to be a Mr. B.I.G. And if you want some dig, dig, dignity, you got to dig, 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 dig for your dinner. Dig, 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 dig. Yeah, excavate. <laughs> going to take us to dinner? Any place you want to go. Money's no object. Pick out the fanciest restaurant in town. Just say the word and I'll take you there. Romanoff. Sorry, that's not the word. <laughs> we want to go to a swanky place. Well, naturally. That's where I intend taking you. How about Chauncey's Midtown? Well, I never, I never heard of the place. Is it expensive? Oh, yeah, but it's worth it. They give you a lot of food. Why, for a dollar, you can barely carry a tray to the table. All right. <laughs> Never mind the cafeterias. If we want you to take us to an expensive place, why don't you take us to, to Pierre's French restaurant? Okay, I'll take you to Pierre's. After all, what can it cost me? Maybe 30, ouch, dollars. <laughs> uh, Bill, Bill, before we go, I want to call Mother and thank her for the flowers she sent. I'll be right back. Okay, honey. Hey, Remley, it's sure nice of you to take us out to dinner. Oh, I can't. That's all right. Wait a minute. Come in. Well, look what somebody sent us for Easter. Bugs Bunny. <laughs> what do you mean, Bugs Bunny? It's me, Julius. Oh, I'm sorry, kid. Your buck teeth and twitching nose fool me. <laughs> and get the carrot out of your mouth. It's a fine way to greet me after I came all the way over here to wish you a happy Easter. I even brought you these lilies. You brought those lilies for me? Oh, thanks, kid. Let me have them. Okay. Lie down and I'll drape them across your chest. <laughs> All right, kid, will you beat it? We ain't got no time for them smart cracks now. Mr. Remley's taking Mrs. Harris and me out to dinner. Would you mind repeating that ridiculous statement? <laughs> Who's taking these out to dinner? I'm taking them out to dinner. <laughs> to be at the Salvation Army soup kitchen. <laughs> I'm not taking them to the Salvation. Wonder what their entree is today. Ram. <laughs> if you bring your drum, Curly, we won't have any trouble getting in. You're taking us to Pierre's. I'll bring my French horn. You're going to Pierre's? <laughs> Gee, I wish I could go with you, Mr. Remley. My folks went away and left me alone and they forgot to give me money for my Easter dinner. Oh, that's a shame, kid. I'd be glad to take you with me, Julius, except for one thing. What? I wouldn't be found dead at the same table with you. <laughs> <laughs> but, Mr. Mendley, I'm hungry. I'm starving. I ain't got no money, and if you don't take me to dinner with you, there's only one thing left for me to do. What? I'll eat it the brown diaper and charge it. <laughs> so long, you cheapskate. So long, so long. How do you like that? He has a charge account at the brown derby. How could he? They only give charge accounts to movie stars. They probably think he's lassie. He looks like anybody. <laughs> hey, Curly, I got an idea. Pierre's is too swanky. 
Let's go to a restaurant that's a little less formal. I know a spot downtown with real atmosphere. I'm with you, Remley. You're buying. <laughs> You'll love this place, Curly. They have checkered tablecloths, candlelight, and wine. Well, fellas, I'm ready to go. Oh, good. Go get your music, Alice. Well, what do I need music for? When we get to the restaurant, somebody might ask you to sing. Now, who is going to ask me to sing in the restaurant? Me. I get the meal cheaper that way. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to sing in public, but if you want me to, I'll sing right now. That ain't going to save me any money, but go ahead. I hear singing and there's no one there. I smell blossoms and the trees are bare. All day long I seem to walk on air. I wonder why. I wonder why I keep tossing in my sleep at night And what's more, I've lost my appetite Stars that choose to twinkle in the skies Are twinkling in my eyes I wonder why You don't need analyzing It is not so surprising that you feel very strange but nice Your heart goes pitter-patter We know just what's the matter What? Because we've been there once or twice Lucky Put your head on our shoulder okay. You need someone who's older So true A rub down with a velvet glove That I'd love There is nothing you can take To be that pleasant day You're not sick, you're just in love I hear singing and there's no one there I smell blossoms and the trees are bare All day long I seem to walk on air I wonder why, I wonder why I keep tossing in my sleep at night And that more I've lost my appetite There is that you can twinkle in the sky Or twinkling in my eyes I wonder why We're just, we're just in love Frankie, I thought we were going to Pierre's. No, this place is better. Let's see, the restaurant's in this street someplace. Oh, there it is. There's the sign. This is the place. Remley, I don't like the looks of this. What's the matter? Well, look at the sign. Clancy's Italian Restaurant and Emergency Hospital. <laughs> Those are two separate signs. Oh. The hospital's next door to the restaurant. And don't worry about the food. Let's go in. Nobody ever died eating here. Unless they don't pay the check. Grog! <laughs> Hiya, Grog. What are you doing here? I am now in a restaurant business. I took this place over from Clancy. Did you buy it from him? You might say that. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be right, but you might say it. <laughs> Rogan, you didn't force him out of business at the point of a gun. No, please. I do not believe in resorting to physical violence. Clancy's still around. He's my, my silent partner. Doesn't he have anything to say about the business? How much talking can you do from the bottom of the river? <laughs> Maybe we better go someplace else, Frank. Don't so touch that doorknob. It's electrified. <laughs> But we don't want to eat here. Look, baby, you want dinner. This is a restaurant. Don't give me no trouble. Sit down. <laughs> Look, Krogan, you can't force us to eat here if we don't want to. Who's forcing you? If you don't want to eat here, you just say so. You can feel perfectly free to be carried out. <laughs> well, now that you're seated, what do you want? Well, first of all, I'd like a clean tablecloth. What's the matter with this one? It's kind of doity. <laughs> well, now 
spatula in. We ain't got towels. People have got to wipe their hands on something. <laughs> now, what do you want for dinner? Oh, I, I suggest that you uh, try a specialty. Uh, what is your specialty? Pork chops a la mode. <laughs> pork chops a la mode? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, a cold pork chop on top of a hot pork chop. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> Sounds awful to me. Phil, let's get out of here. Okay, honey, get in front of me and we'll shoot our way out. <laughs> Friendly, you're taking us to Pierre. Oh, this is a much nicer restaurant, Frankie. I love the French atmosphere. Don't you, Phil? We. Oui. <laughs> You're so dangerous, shy, so bully, but to soir, but silly girl. All right, Maurice. You know, you know, we may be in a little trouble. I, I notice the menus are printed in French, and all the waiters are talking French. I only speak the language a little. And in that I, case, I... let me handle it. You speak French, Curly? Happens to be my business. <laughs> you forget that last year I summered in the South of France. I'll take care of everything. Just hold my beret while I call the head waiter. <laughs> hey, senor! <laughs> I didn't answer you. Yeah, I can't understand. Oh, I know. I was using the salutation for a single man. The guy's probably married. I'll lay the married one on him. Senorita! <laughs> I knew that'd turn him. Here he comes now. Uh, bonjour, madame, messieurs. C'est un plaisir à vous servir chez Pierre. Bonjour, and Fifi Darcy to you, sir. <laughs> nice going, Jacques. Now, tell him we want a table for three. Yavo. <laughs> Monsieur? We have come, eh, here to eat, eh, a meal, eh? <laughs> and we want un tabel for, um... Let me see, how do you say three in French? Oh, yeah, ein, zwei, drei... Dry people. <laughs> oh, Phil, please. Uh, monsieur, un table pour trois personnes? Ah, oui, madame, un table oui. pour trois, suivez-moi, s'il vous plaît. Oui. What'd he say? What'd he say? He said, follow me. Oh, yeah. That high school French of his, it gets me all confused. <laughs> ah, voici votre table, madame. Asseyez-vous, s'il vous plaît. What do you say? What do you say? He said, don't make no passes at the waitress. <laughs> <laughs> this is our table, and we should sit down. Sit down? Oh, of course. Uh, Francois, squattez-vous. <laughs> Parquet, your carcoos. <laughs> Seat dune. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, monsieur, I speak a little English. Uh, perhaps you want me to interpret the menu? Interpret for me? <laughs> Ooh la la, you fool, you. <laughs> we know how to order, don't we, Remley? Yeah, of course. Garçon. To start off, we'll have three orders of Cherchez La Femme. <laughs> but, Monsieur, Femme means woman. In that case, just make it two orders. <laughs> you better make it one order. My gendarme is with me. <laughs> Fellas, please, maybe you'd better let me order. Uh, let's start off with some... Some hors d'oeuvres. Okay. Waiter, bring us two bottles of hors d'oeuvres room temperature. <laughs> uh, monsieur, if you want something to drink, uh, how about some champagne? Champagne? Uh, okay. Uh, how about mums? Yeah, you can rub a little of that on me, too. <laughs> Phil, why don't you let the waiter order for it? Well, us? it isn't necessary. I can read this menu. Now, let's see. Oh, 
For a starter, we'll have a plate of foie gras. Well, that's pate de foie gras. Yeah, yeah. And after that, I'll have this rag out of boo. <laughs> How about you, Remley? I'll have the boo too, but leave the rag in. <laughs> Prices. I want everything that goes with it. <laughs> oh, sacré bleu. Madame, pourquoi est-ce que vous êtes ici avec these schnooks? <laughs> well, one schnook I'm married to, the other one is going to pay the bill. Alice, please. Waiter, look, we'll have some of this, some of this, some of that, and some of this. Uh, oui, monsieur. Uh, would you care for a demi tasse? That depends. Is it tender? <laughs> Curly, don't show your ignorance. A demi tasse is not something to eat. That's French for a small bus boy. <laughs> what are we gonna do with a small bus boy? That's I what know. I mean. Look, you, you better let me order, just a minute. Waiter, we'll have some bird's nest soup, some egg foo young, and an order of chop suey. <laughs> but I am sorry, monsieur, we do not have chop suey. No chop suey? What kind of a French restaurant is this? <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. I'm going to take you to another place. Oh. oh, Frankie, let's forget the whole thing. No, I promised to take you to dinner, and I'm going to. This place I'm going to take you to is clean, and they serve the kind of food that you like, Alice. You just follow me. <laughs> mm. Wasn't that a wonderful dinner? It certainly was. Oh, yeah. I'm glad I thought of this place. Never have had such delicious food. I must go compliment the chef. Excuse me. Uh, pardon me, but I just came in to tell you that your cooking is delicious. Uh, I'd like one more order of roast beef, but this time cut it thick and don't put any sauce on Get it. Get out of my kitchen, Frankie, or I'll drain you! <laughs> Before you buy anything, you want to know what it will do for you. And when it comes to a phonograph, you can be sure of this. The RCA Victor 45 actually does far, far more than any other phonograph. First, of course, there's its remarkable distortion-free performance, performance that lends to recorded music a concert hall clarity. There's effort-saving convenience, for RCA Victor's 45 offers you up to a full hour of music, the exact selections you want, in the exact order you want at the mere touch of a button. And the low-cost, non-breakable 7-inch 45 record can be stored on a regular bookshelf, 150 to a foot. Look over the wide range of models of the 45 at your RCA Victor dealers. And while you're there, ask for the magnificent Red Seal recording, The Great Caruso. This long-playing record offers you eight of Caruso's favorite Italian arias sung by Mario Lanza. <laughs> Folks, this is Phil again. They say that life is priceless, but that isn't quite true. It can be bought. Lives can be saved with your contribution to the Red Cross. One of the urgent Red Cross operations centers about the fluid of life itself, blood. Only you can make sure that this program is continued and expanded. And this year, increase your contribution to the Red Cross. Thanks and good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Remember, whether you're buying a television set, a radio, a Victrola phonograph, or records, put your faith in the cornerstone of American home entertainment for three generations. RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. Theater Guild presents a tale of two cities, now Hedda Hopper on NBC.